All right, I bet you thought after Algebra 1 you never have to get back into quadratics, but guess what? They're coming back. And the cool part is we're going to look at some different forms of these quadratics. So I got a parabola here, and, you know, obviously that's a second-degree polynomial, or second-degree function is what we could say. And this is our standard or general form is what they call it, you know, where it's like, uh, as the book will say, they'll say y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You know, so the A is 2 in this case, the B is negative 20, and the C is 48. Um, and we actually have a couple different ways we can write this. So usually you see it in this nice general form, this standard form. Um, and there's a reason why that's useful to have general form. But we also have these other forms, and there's reasons why these are useful. So the first thing we're going to look at is vertex form. And we've looked at vertex form already when we looked at our transformations. So in this case, remember uh, for a parabola, if it looks something like this, the vertex is the point where it starts rolling back over, right? Where it's kind of symmetrical. Um, so the vertex here is going to be 5, negative 2. And how do I know that? Well, remember, our uh, vertex form is listed like this. They, the book is going to say y equals x minus h plus k. And the vertex would be your h and your k. So just remember, the h is always kind of like the opposite sign. So even as it says minus 5 there, that's a vertex of 5 for the x, right? Because it's x minus h. Um, so it's always kind of the opposite sign. That's what you can think of there. And then the y for the vertex is just whatever's on the end, minus 2. So it's at negative 2 in this case. And then lastly, we have, well, what can we do with quadratics? We can factor these bad boys. So we also have factored form. So in this case, that would be if I factored out a 2 and then factored this quadratic. Uh, and we'll look at how to do that again. We're going to review factoring in just a few days here as well. Um, so yeah, here's factor form. And there's a reason why this is useful. Okay, And obviously, vertex form is useful because it finds the vertex. All right, so, so here we go. We got a graph of that quadratic, of that parabola. And if you look, you know, here's our vertex form. And we said that was the point 5, negative 2. Well, we got that right down here, 5, negative 2. There's the vertex. Okay, and if you notice, factored form, take a look at this. Look at the x-intercepts, 4 and 6. Put little red dots here. So at 4 and 6, we also call these guys the roots, and we'll talk about that in a second. Well, they're 4 and 6. Well, look at this factored form. You notice anything? Yeah. Well, 4 minus 4 gives me 0, and 6 minus 6 gives me 0. So just think about that. So our roots come into play, or our x-intercepts come into play in our factored form, okay? And we'll describe why that is in this case. And the y-intercept of this graph is 48. So if this thing kept going up and we saw where it crossed the y-axis to be 48, well, where do we notice the 48's at? Right here, that plus 48 in the end. So that's in the general form. So some things that we should notice is that in vertex form, it's easy to find the vertex, Okay, that's the most important thing. So in vertex form, all we take a look, remember it's x minus h and then the plus k at the end here. x minus h squared, technically, you got to have the square. So 5 for the x value and negative 2 for the y value, so there's my vertex. And let's just do a few of these just to roll through, get used to it. So all these are in vertex form. If I look at this guy, what would be the vertex? Well, it's in x minus, that's good, so it's 2. And negative 1. There we go. All right, next one. Remember, it's x minus. So this is really minus a negative 3. So the x is a negative 3, and the y is a 7. How about down here? Well, now there is no, there's no x minus h. So it's really minus 0, right? Because x minus 0 is x. There's just the negative out front. So since there's nothing with it, no plus or minus, we know that the x value is 0. And then we still have our y of negative 2. And then lastly, if we notice here, x minus, well, negative 1. So negative 1. And now there's nothing at the end, so it's really like plus 0. So that's where our y would be 0. So there's kind of all the different ways we could see uh, the, what the vertex is in vertex form. So vertex form, very useful to find the vertex. Very obvious. All right, factored form. Okay, factored form is, the advantage is, it's easy to see the x-intercepts, which are called the roots, or the zeros of the equation. Now, why would they call it the zeros? Well, if I look back here, 
They call it the zeros because what value is zero for my two roots? See, this point is what, four, zero, and this point is six, zero. So the y value is always zero, correct? If I look here, the y is zero, the y is zero. And if I would go over to this factored form, if I look at this, if I would plug in zero for y, and this should start looking familiar back to our quadratics in algebra one. Um, if I'm trying to get something equal to zero, like this is equal to zero, well, it's all multiplication, right? Two times this, x minus four times that. Well, if one thing is zero, the whole thing is zero. So all I do is I just set that x minus four equal to zero, and I set that x minus six equal to zero to find the two roots, or the two zeros, or the x-intercepts, right? Because the x-intercepts are when y is zero. And it's just nice and easy. In this case, I figured, you know, I could just look. Well, x would be four and six. Those are the two things. So knowing that, like in this case, so to find the zeros, the roots, the x-intercepts, I'd plug in zero for y, and just like I did over there. So usually you can just look and see it, and I can say, oh yeah, x would be four and x would be six. You know, how would I make those zeros? So I'd say x is four and six. Whoa, why would I put a comma in front? That was silly. All right, so these are all in factored form. So most of these I should be able to see. Remember, because all I'm doing is plugging in zero for y, and then I take a look. Well, any, you know, if I multiply by zero, the whole thing's zero. So how do I make this first guy zero? I'd plug in a four for x. How do I make the second guy zero? I'd plug in a negative one for x. So x would equal negative one and four, or four and negative one. Those would be the roots. Looking at the next one, well, this one I can tell that would be negative four. What about this first guy right here? Well, two times what times what would give me zero? What would I plug in for this first x? Yeah, zero. Two times zero would give me zero. And it doesn't matter what this would be. Zero plus four is four. Two times zero times four is zero. So x would also equal zero in that case. Yeah, so if the, very, if the x is out front, just know that it's always zero there. How about this next guy? Well, this is really five times x plus six times x plus six. So there's really only going to be one solution for my x. There's only going to be one root. So that would be negative 6, right? How would I get that whole thing to be 0? Plug in negative 6 for x. And in the end, still nice and easy. What would I put in for x? 2.1. What would I put in for x over here? Negative 6.75 to make that whole thing 0. There we go. What if you get something a little bit nastier like this? I do have a quick trick for this as well. Remember, like I said, I could set it up on the side. I could put like 2x minus 3 equals 0, right? And solve that. But my quick trick is, well, I need this whole thing to be 3, right? Because 3 minus 3 is 0. And then how do I cancel this 2? Well, I just got to put 3 over 2, right? Because if I took 2 times that, the 2s would cancel, and I'd be left with 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So that's how I do that nice and quick. So that would be 3 halves. And if I did it over here, I know I need this to be a negative 7, right? Because negative 7 plus 7 is 0. And to get cancel the 5, I put the 5 in the denominator. So that would be negative 7 fifths. So... One of those little quick tricks that I like to use rather than having to write it all out or think through it. And lastly, general or standard form. Well, we kind of looked at that. It's easy to see the y-intercept because how do you find the y-intercept? Well, you plug in 0 for x. So if I plugged in 0 here and 0 here, those would be gone. And what's my y-intercept? Positive 48. It's nice and easy to see. So make sure all the parentheses are gone for that general and standard form. And changing from vertex and, and factored form are nice and easy. All you got to do is just get rid of the parentheses. You know, it might take a little bit of work. You might have to distribute and be careful of our perfect square trinomials, which we'll look at in a little while. But let's just do that really quickly here. So this guy, what is this? Is this factored or vertex form? Well, it's not all multiplication. I got multiplication here. This is multiplication, but this is not multiplication. So it's not factored form. This would be vertex form. So let's just write the vertex. The vertex would be what? Negative 4, negative 5? All right. And if I want this in standard or general form, can I distribute this 3 right away? No, I can't. I have to use the squared first, right? Because exponents come before multiplication. So I'm just going to rewrite this out. And remember, it's not just x squared plus 16. It doesn't work that way. This is a perfect square trinomial is what it's going to make. And if you don't remember the rule, we're going to have to remember it here soon. But... Let's just rewrite this all out. So really, it's x plus 4 times x plus 4, and then minus 5. Now I could distribute. So I'd get 3 times, well, x squared, right? x times x, and then x times 4, so that's 4x. Then I have another 
x, and lastly a 16. And we still got a minus at 5 at the end. And then I can combine these two, what, an 8x? And distribute my 3 now. So I'd have 3x squared, and then 3 times 8x, which is 24x. And then 3 times 16, which is 48 minus 5. So lastly, our general form would be 3x squared plus 24x plus 43. So this guy would have a y-intercept of what? 43. That's something I could tell. And let's do one more. Let's do one with uh, factored form now. All right, so this is factored form, right? All multiplication. So it doesn't matter what you start with. I could distribute this 2 first, or I could foil these two binomials first. I like, I like getting rid of these first. I'm going to do this first. So I got 2 out front still, and I got x squared minus or plus 6x, right, because x times 6, and then I got negative 5 times x, and negative 5 times 6, and now I'll distribute the 2. So I got 2x squared plus 12x minus 10x minus 60. There we go. Oh, combine like terms. So what can I change this to? 2x squared plus 2x, right? 12x minus 10x minus 60. All right, there's going to be a few more things we look at this and, and can tell from it, but let's just go with, start with there, start with our vertex general and factored form and just understand why we like to use all three, right? They're all useful for different reasons.